get ready to go live, okay? Definitely. All right. Thanks for tuning in. You are listening to Conversations with a Citizen. This is Conversations with a Citizen. I am your host, Tia Carol Jones. I am here today with Lakeisha Gray Sewell. Lakeisha is the founder and executive director of Girls Like Me Project. Lakeisha, welcome to the show. Thank you so very much for having me. This is just a pleasure. This is the sunlight on a dreary, dreary day. So thank you. <laughs> great, great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So ooh, when, when people ask you that question, what do you say? Um, I am definitely a, a passionate being. Um, proud, proud black woman. Uh, love my community, love my people, love our culture, love our traditions, uh, which is what helped me to create uh, Girls Like Me, the organization that I founded, um, because I want black girls to feel that same sense of pride. Um, I'm a mother of two, well actually four. I have two uh, human babies and two furry babies. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> uh, uh, um, wife to one of the baddest DJs in the city of Chicago, DJ B-Side. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> and I'm also uh, the founder of Girls Like Me Project, a um, girls serving organization, uh, which focuses on media literacy and digital storytelling. And what led to the founding of Girls Like Me Project in 2012? Yeah, so actually, so what led to the founding in 2012 is that we had to uh, become uh, legal uh, entity, <laughs> okay, okay. but before that, in 2008, what what um, precipitated it is that I've been uh, volunteering in my son's school and my daughter's school, um, but in my son's classroom, what myself and another parent noticed is that the girls there, ages eight and nine, okay. were exhibiting this really aggressive behavior towards one another, okay. towards the boys, um, a lot of mean girl behavior. Um, a lot of low self-esteem and also some somewhat untoward things they were doing to boys that were definitely uh, a little bit more mature that you wouldn't expect girls to be doing at that age. At eight. At eight years old. Eight and nine. It was fourth grade. I won't forget it. Um, and so I decided that we would do a ladies lunch with them, you know, just bring them together and kind of help them to create these bonds, first of all, that would break up this mean girl kind of behavior. Okay. And to uh, help them to kind of develop this sense of responsibility for each other and a love for each other. And that turned into something I, I never expected. Um, we saw immediate changes. We saw bonds forming where girls were actually just feeling responsible and accountable for each other. They were looking out for each other. Um, they wouldn't allow anybody to be off by themselves. Before, they were ostracized and pushing people away, and okay. now they were pulling you in. If you if they noticed that a girl was sitting on the side, they would pull her in. Okay. Um, girls would, wouldn't want to be on the side anymore. Girls who had, who had shied away and shrinked away were now speaking up for themselves and, 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 and uh, exploring other things outside of the classroom. They became involved in arts and other things is that in that, that nature. And so that was in fourth grade. Uh, I stayed with them until eighth grade. They, they, uh, so the school only goes up to fifth grade. And so then they went to the next campus and okay. then I went to the next campus as well and started doing, um, the program became bigger. So it was not just that classroom of girls, but all the girls. Uh, those girls always were in the program, no matter what. Okay. Um, and I stayed with them until eighth grade, and I'm telling you, the changes uh, from, from that time, um, I knew that that was something that didn't need to be done just on a volunteer basis. It couldn't be done just once a week. Um, it needed to be more structured and organized and, and, and foundational, and so that is why I actually went ahead and moved forward. When they were, 2012 is when they were graduating eighth grade, okay. and I said, let me graduate too and, <laughs> and create this into a real uh, organization. Okay. Yeah. 
why is what girls like me does so crucial to the development of girls and young women oh boy so you know i always go back to when i was younger to my teenage years and really my formative years when i was even younger than that i always think about what claire huxtable um represented for me i always think about what denise huxtable represented for me i think about what whitley gilbert represented for me right, right. i spent a lot of time in books and television uh, because I lived in, in what is now known as Bronzeville but at that time was known as the low end okay. and we didn't have a, a good reputation uh, everything around me was telling me that who I am and because of where I came from was bad okay. that everything in my neighborhood was of no value um, that it wasn't a, a, a desirable place to be not what it's saying today <laughs> but back then right. um, it wasn't a, a very affirming place from outside on the inside it was right? right we the community was tight but on the outside we were the lowest of chicago um but i escaped that um when i watched television on thursday nights especially <laughs> uh, channel five uh thursday nights was my escape okay. reading my angelo books was my yeah. escape okay. uh reading all of virginia hamilton books were my escape uh, I could go on and on with, with, with what I read, but I found the power in media, whether it was the written word or whether it was visual, it gave me a hope. It, it also gave me a positive re reflection. And so I know that if I had that power, mm -hmm. if media gave that power to me, I also went um, on to major in mass communications, radio and television in college as well. Um, I just think the power of media is so important. And so I knew if that could give me that sense of hope and flight and, and ambition, then it could definitely be a tool that we could use for the, for the girls of this generation, that we could show them a different positive way. We could show them um, hope, obviously, for, another, for the future, but also affirm where they are right now. Like, you have value right now. Where you are, who you are, is valuable to society. And you can use the media to tell that story. You can use that media to show that. You can use the media to amplify whatever issues you're feeling, whatever um, whatever parts of yourself that need that affirmation. Use media to do it. Whatever bill, policy, whatever thing in society that is wrong, you can use media to advocate to write write it. Um, and so that that is that's why I believe that media is the most powerful tool. Um, one of my sheroes, ancestor, um, one of the most powerful ancestors that I, I connect to is uh, Ida B. Wells, who said the media is the most powerful. There's no educate. There, the, uh, what did she say? Lord, the people must know before they can act, mm -hmm. and there is no educator to compare with the press. Mm -hmm. When the press does its job, when you use media in a responsible way, you can move this nation, you can move this world, you can move hearts, and you can also move your own mind. Uh, outside of blocks that it may be experiencing. That's a lot. That was, yeah, was dynamic. Yeah, yeah we can end now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How did you get the idea for Chicago Day of the Girl and the Dear Chicago Girls podcast? Yeah, so 10 years, Chicago Day of the Girl, we just celebrated. It was awesome. And that idea came because I'm, I, in the very, I was an early adapter of social media, especially okay. Twitter. And so back around 2011, I noticed uh, that there was a lot of conversation around um, International Day of the Girl. United, okay. United Nations had, had um, began this conversation about gender empowerment, global girls and global women movement. There was actually, um, uh, I think what they call it, a treatise put together uh, for a plan for, I think, up to 2030 the plan for girls all around the world. And so this was intense conversations. You know, when you're talking about the United Nations, you're talking about everybody in the world having this conversation. Right. But as I looked at the conversation and examined who was a part of the conversation, I noticed that the conversation was about everybody else but black girls in America. <laughs> it was about girls in Sri Lanka. It was about what was happening to the girls in Nigeria. It was about, you know, what was happening in Cambodia and all these other places. And I'm like, wait a minute. Where are the voices and experiences of black girls? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, uh, these are third world countries. America's the most powerful country in the world. You know, 
We're, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about, we're talking about people that's in abject poverty. Hmm. Have you been on the west side of Chicago? Have you been in Inglewood? Have you been in Roseland? Have you been in Piatone, right. <laughs> Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, schools are closing. There's a lack of education. Girls can't get an education. At the time, Malana, Mal Malaya, um, oh, I, I don't want to mess up her name, but she's a young girl who in Pakistan oh, was shot. Oh, Malala Yousafzai. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She was shot in the head trying to get an education. Well, mm, in America, in Chicago, 54 schools at that time were closing in black and brown communities. Mm -hmm. That's lack of access. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, uh, in 2012, no, it wasn't 2012, but shortly after that, uh, Hadia Pendleton was shot on a school day um, and before that you had uh, several girls that attended Harper High School who were shot um, so we have gun violence also education right, right. at the same time uh, CP, the, the Flint water uh, lead in the water had come about but then CPS started doing internal testing as well and found that some of our schools also have lead in the water uh, we also know that homes have lead and asbestos and paint in the in the apartment and paint, right? So I'm saying all this to say that our girls are also experiencing these same things. Yeah. It may not look as it looks in a third world country, but at the same time, how can you thrive and be who you're supposed to be in this world and contribute to this world if these are the same situations? So I said, you know what? Black girls on the south and west sides of Chicago are going to be a part of this movement. They're going to be a part of this day. And we're going to create something where we can educate them about this day and also uh, give them the tools so that they can be contributors to the conversation and to their own development. And so that's how we started it. Um, we started in a room, a one room. <laughs> Our partner, um, the African International House, uh, Patrick Wittor, gave us one room. We had 80 girls in that room that day, and that was that was the start of it and it's just grew since then uh, we always keep it free uh, we always keep a global conversation um, so that they understand not just what's happening for them but also what's happening to other girls uh, and so that was the impetus for that and then for uh, Chicago I mean for um, Dear Girls podcast uh, so Dear Chicago Girl podcast came about because we'd actually got funding from the Field uh, Foundation for storytelling okay. and for narrative um, narratives. And again, media, for me, being the most powerful tool uh, that there is, I thought, you know, what better way for girls to express themselves, hear themselves, hear one another, uh, and then to also share their own voices and not to be dictated to what they talk about. Like this is their, their platform for them to understand um, their own issues and, and navigating that just a, a space for them and so that was the impetus for that and, and it, it it is also grown um, we've had we had a couple of episodes up this summer we've done more and so just waiting to uh, actually uh, get them up but it's just been a great um, platform just to hear what girls are thinking and girls in Chicago specifically you know I always say unapologetically that this world, everything in this world will move forward because of a black girl and black woman who came out of Chicago. Okay. What is the overall mission and what do you hope girls who participate take away from being a part of the organization? Yeah, so the overall mission is to help girls critically examine the social, cultural, and political ideologies that, that are in media. Um, we want them to learn how to do that so they can push back against any stereotypes, stigmas, or untruths. So anything in the media that's telling them that they're ghetto, that's telling them that they're violent, that's telling them that they're hypersexual, that's telling them that, that because where they live they don't deserve, right? All of these different things. We want them to be able to say, oh no, I know who I am. Uh, we also uh, help them, our mission is also to help form a global sisterhood using media. And so what we hope uh, from, from girls who participate, one, we really strongly hope that they explore careers in media and digital storytelling. That's our, our highest hope. Um, but on a, a very uh, low micro level, what we hope is that they get an understanding of who they are, their history, or as we like to say, herstory. 
Um, we want them to get an understanding of the contributions that black people, especially black women, have made to this world and to instill in them a belief that they too can do it, um, that they can uh, be contributors, that they add value when they show up, they add value. And that value doesn't come because they've had to change or shrink mm -hmm. or deny themselves that they've had to change their hair, that they've had to cold switch, that they've had to go and attain some fancy degree. No, right where you are when you came into this world, you have value mm -hmm. and you stand up in that value. And that is what we want them to do. We want them to be proud that have just as much pride um, when they're dining on 87th Street as they do if they were down in the Palmer House Hilton. We want them to hold that same sense of esteem about themselves, no matter where they go in the world, that they are uh, something to be proud of and have that great, that, that humbleness uh, to know that it's not just them that they represent, but the ancestors and the Most High. And I must say, I'm unapologetically a believer, so <laughs> put that out there. <laughs> Since 2012, how many girls have been served by the organization? Oh, boy. So right now, we know that the Day of the Girl event has served 700 girls. Oh, okay. um, through our programming, though, we know, uh, including our special events in our program, that we're around about 900, um, around 900 and 1,000 girls who we've served. You also have the goal of directly reaching 400 african-american girls by 2012 what are some of the ways you intend to do that mm -hmm. so 2022 i mean 2022 yeah I'm sorry. so by the end of 2022 and then COVID, that that ambitious goal was set before there was a such thing as COVID. uh so now that COVID is here uh we're going to push that date back to 2023 2024 but how we're okay. going to do that is through a talk show that we're creating and developing for girls uh this will be uh so that's one of the ways. So this is, will be a way for girls to have their own platform and then a conversation with other girls that we'll have. And that will also not just be a space for them to express and to ask questions and educate, but also a place to share community resources uh, for families, for their mothers and fathers and grandparents and caregivers as well. So that's one way. Our other way is partnering with our school partners that we are with. Um, going into schools and um, sharing our programming there, training other organizations who also want to do this work around media literacy and digital storytelling, and then also uh, our, our initiatives with Chicago Day of the Girl and our other initiatives with uh, Soul Power Healing, our summer camps, and those other type of programming. So it's pretty easy feat after all. <laughs> How can those who want to be mentors get involved? And how can girls and young women who want to participate get involved? So the girls who want to participate can go online. There's a membership. It says join us, and they can sign up for a membership. Uh, we also, and when we're in schools, they can sign up through their schools. Uh, and for those who want to be members, yet again, our website is where they go fill out the information. Um, I will say this because I know a lot of times it's not um, kosher to tell or say, um, show any weaknesses or, or ways or I would like to say uh, challenge opportunities opportunities okay. for growth okay. so what I will say is that we are in need of someone who helps us to um, develop that system that keeps mentors and volunteers okay. in place uh, I'm putting that out there <laughs> because that has been a challenge for us to do that and so um, we have a, a steady stream of volunteers um, who, who give selflessly, but then there are also many others who want to come in and do it on a deeper level So it's not like an event-based, but really a, a core group who um, are screened for background okay. um, But who can play a larger role and a more impactful role in our girls' lives okay. Where can people go to find out more about Girls Like Me? We are all over. <laughs> we're on social media. We're on Facebook, Girls Like Me Project. On Instagram, Girls Like Me Project. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Girls Like Me Project. Twitter, Girls Like Me, P-R-O-J. Uh, our website uh, is girlslikemeproject.org. Uh, and so any of those avenues, they can definitely access us, access us, send an email, or just a phone call. That's we also have 
phone still, right? So 773-599-3490 is the number that they can call. Okay. Before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, so I, I, I always love to take these opportunities to throw it all out there. Uh, we have just celebrated 10 years of Chicago Day of the Girl. And I think that with the United Nations making this an official observance on October 11th, I would like to implore the city of Chicago, the county of Cook, and the state of Illinois to, to follow suit and declare October 11th as Day of the Girl. Uh, and she, Girls Like Me is ready to take the lead with that and to participate and help bring on. So that it's not just our day. We, we're not trying to claim it for ourselves. We want this to be a day where every girl, at this point, every girl serving organization should be honoring October 11th. We can do it all together. You can do yours over there, over there. But at, on October 11th, every girl in this city should know that if they are loved, should be affirmed, and should be celebrated on that day. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for this opportunity. Remember to